couldn't help myself. Everybody else gone swimming. I haven't done a video here for ages, not just me. So I'm just gonna go over a couple of things that we did in this morning's class. So those of you that came to class can just recap. And it was my, my joy of namaskaras and hands. So, but it's for a sense of softness. So we want, we often think of, Right, I am very happy because I've decided not to go swimming. I've decided to do a video instead today. I'm just going to recap a few things from class. Okay, so if you'd like to come to Sukhasan, I'm just change across of your legs so you're not always doing the same first cross. And then just put your hands either side of the thighs and allow the thighs to just draw in just a little bit so you feel a sense of firm support in and around your hips okay and then just allow the lower portion of the belly so think about a little zipper and think that you're, you're kind of the little teeth of the zipper are just coming together the fibers are coming together in the lower portion of the abdomen and then allow the frontal hip bones to be moving towards each other just a little. And you'll feel a nice sense of firm support. And now soften your palms and just let them rest on the thighs and let your shoulders relax. Okay. And now see if you can just lengthen the skin that's covering your collarbones. Allow the shoulder blades to come into the back and let the back of the neck feel broad and wide. Release the tongue so the energy of the tongue is coming down. Breathe. Close the eyes and just feel the palms softly being absorbed into the thigh, but also being softly supported by the thigh. And then allow the hands. We're going to bring the hands into Namaskarasan. So let here, turn your palms up. And just bring your hands like in a little cup shape. Okay, and now you, you, had, you felt how soft your hands were on your thighs. So now see if you can make that softness happen by rolling the palm flesh and the finger flesh in towards each other. So you get this nice sense of softness between the left and the right hand. And then just observe that the base of the thumb is coming to the base of the breastbone and allow yourself to lift and lengthen. Okay, so lifting and lengthening the spine without losing that sense of containment that we've already got. It's like a recipe. You know, you, you're mixing up your sponge cake and you, you add your, what is it, butter and sugar first and then your eggs. You don't take the butter and sugar out to add the eggs. You, they come in on top. Okay, then we've got the flour. So relax your shoulders, my flour. <laughs> and breathe. And keep the, the sense of um, supportive hips. Relax shoulders and soft palms. And if you keep those hands without fidgeting, eventually the left and the right hand almost dissolve into each other. Breathe. Relax the eyes and release the tongue. Let the skin feel as soft as the skin between your hands. Keep that supported feeling around the hips. And then when you're ready, release the hands down. Softly place your hands to your thighs and open the eyes. Let's change across the legs. So your shoulders, when you sit in Sukhasana, should be directly over your hips. You've got this nice sense of firm support. Okay, so it's nice and held. Okay, now my, I haven't shaved my legs, and it's quite a good, if you've got puna pants on and you haven't shaved your legs, let your hands feel the hairs on the tops of your legs, and then let the hands soften through those hairs. Really, and it's amazing because you'll start, you go, oh, I didn't notice the hairs. <laughs> now you can. Okay. And then again, soft support, sides of the waist, lift it up, relaxed shoulders, supported shoulder blades, 
wide collarbones. And then again, base of the thumb to the base of the breastbone. Lift the heart center up. Widen the space between the eyebrows. Release the tongue. Breathe. The softness of the palms spreading out over the shoulders, around the neck. The eyes are resting down. And the crown of the head is lifted up. You can just quietly repeat the invocation if you know it. And breathe. Soft palms. And when you're ready, you can release the hands. If you're still doing the invocation, that's fine. When you're ready, come up to Tadasan. So we're going to stand just in a, in a very gentle way, have the buttocks down. And so you've got this nice sense of length through the buttock bones, this coming down strongly, and then allow the buttock bones to contract. Contract the hamstring. So um, Guruji says to press the back thighs forwards in Tadasan. So as you start to straighten up through the legs, keep the hips over the ankles, press the back thighs forwards, you'll feel the far thighs come in. Keep that sense of action. Bring the hands into Namaskarasana again. Soft palms, strong legs, relax the shoulders, relax the eyes, breathe. Observe that there's a firm support through the lower body and gentle upliftment through the upper body. Just release your hands and bring your hands either sides of the waist and lengthen the tissues of the waist. And then bring the hands back to Namaskarasan in front of you. Relax the shoulders. Open out the collarbones. Crown of the head up. Heels grounded. Legs firm, strong legs. So get the back of the thighs to press forwards and then take the center of the thigh back, take the thigh bone back, keep the weight down in those heels, observe that the toes are long, feel that the sides of the waist and the fronts and the back of the waist are lifted up, bring the hands down either sides of the body and now raise the arms up, so what I want you to do is I want you to put your hands on your ears, elbows forwards and you can just also, you can softly massage the back of your neck. Okay, keep that sense of softness and space and then take those arms up but keep a containment in the lower body. Keep the lower back nice and long, lower buttocks going into the body, thighs pressing back, hamstrings firm, tailbone lengthening down. Weight back in the heels, toes long. Feel now that you're stretching up thumbs and baby fingers straight up, but don't over tense the neck. Remember the soft palms and then lower the arms down quite quickly. And you should feel almost broad and wide like this, although you're still in your Tadasan. Okay, next thing that we're going to do is we're going to do Badanguyasan. So interlace the fingers and push the palms down. As you push the palms down, keep the legs exactly as they are and lift the chest up, back chest and front chest. Feel how much work that is, it makes me chuckle. Okay, and then keep that sense of containment as you raise those arms up. Don't disturb the feet, don't disturb the legs, don't disturb the mind, don't disturb the eyes. And then exhale, lower the arms down. Keep the chest lifted. 
turn the palms back up and change the interlace. So if, if you're new, if you, haven't, have, if you haven't been here, that was my funny walk. So okay, you've got an interlace this way. You change the order of the digits. Yeah, so it's the other thumb on the top. Can you see? That's one thumb on the top. Thumb with the bangles. That's the other, sorry. Thumb, on, thumb with the bangles is underneath. Now the thumb with the bangles is on top and the baby finger on the other side has changed. Okay? And it should feel like you're holding hands with somebody else. And again, so legs, so the weight is in the heels. Look down, just check, is your femur head, the femur head is here, it's a thigh bone. Is it directly over the ankles? And then can you contract the back thighs forwards, open out the backs of the legs, and come back into your standing? Hamstrings, back thighs, press forwards, thighs resist back. And you'll feel that containment. So that we've got the second interlace, push those hands down. Push them down and pull your chest through. Okay, keep that and then raise those arms up. Keep that sense of containment and then lift and lengthen up without losing the grounding. Make sure your toes are lengthening forwards. Outer heels come down. And then when you're ready, release down. Let the arms come down, stretch them down. Maintain that sense of containment without disturbing the lower back. Keep your body completely still. Raise the arms up. Stretch up. But keep the heels grounded, keep the containment, throat soft, lower the arms down, breathe, Urdhva Namaskarasana. So you're going to take the arms and I want you to actually bring them into prayer position if possible just behind the back of your head, okay? And then from there Can you take the arms, tailbone down, legs firm, up, throat soft. If you need to separate the arms, just let them separate. Keep that sense of length, front and back, and lower the arms down. Breathe. Remember the sense of softness in the palms, keep that sense of softness all the way around, weight back in the heels, legs firm, quietly close the eyes, relax the shoulders, release the tongue, breathe. Have the legs strong. Thighs firm. Don't just press those knees back. Get the hamstrings to press forwards. So the, le the knees don't feel locked. They feel supported all the way around. Let's finish with three ohms. Take a breath in. Exhale, swallow your saliva. Breathe in again, keep the face soft. Hips firm. Legs supported, inhaling and on. Relax the eyes. Eyes are closed, be balanced. Oh. Breathe. Release the hands. Gently open the eyes. See the bird just fly past. 
have a lovely, lovely day. So from sitting to standing, I hope that made sense. Ah, you can add it into all those other mix of standing poses.